Okay, good morning and welcome to lesson two, spreadsheet introductions. Okay, so just to remind you what we did last lesson, uh, you are looking at merging cells, changing the colors, the sizes uh, of the fonts, changing the cell width, and also some of the basic formulas, including the function equals sum. Now, we're going to build on those skills, and today's lesson, what we're going to do is look at uh, three more uh, functions. We're going to look at average, max, and min. We're going to look at the absolute cell reference, uh, and what is it, and we're going to look at spreadsheet charts. We're going to create a couple of charts. We're going to add axis labels and titles to each of these as well. Okay, so once you're ready, if you can open up Microsoft Excel, which you will find here, Microsoft Excel, and once you open it up, it will look like this. Uh, one thing I'm not sure if I mentioned last time, but you can actually zoom in and zoom out to make things uh, a bit easier for you. Okay, so beginning with today, today we're going to uh, create something called school exam results. So if you type in there school exam results. And we're going to merge this over all the columns up to column I. So we're going to click and drag to highlight the cells. And then we click on merge and center. Okay, be careful because if you've double clicked inside, it won't let you copy, sorry, it won't let you uh, highlight the cells. So, so just hit your enter button and then you can highlight and then click on merge and center. Okay and i've got the text here just to make it a bit easier for you all uh so you don't have to watch me enter it all in i'm going to paste the text here so you're going to type in all your details here like so uh i'm just going to move this along so let's let's make these fit can you see you can stretch the sizes of the cells as they need be okay you can double click and it will snap to best fit okay but for consistency I'm going to add these in here. Okay, total. And we're going to look at the average and earnings. Okay, so first things first, I would like you to type everything out uh, like this. Okay, and then we can start the formatting. Okay, so now you've typed everything out, we're going to start looking at formatting this spreadsheet. So first off, we're going to uh, go with the blue theme today. Uh, you can choose your, your color, okay? It doesn't have to be blue. I'm going to change the background in uh, dark blue. And again, with the text, uh, white. I'm going to take our labels. I'm going to use a slightly lighter blue, okay? And again, do you remember how to highlight and add a border around the table? Click on borders, the drop down an arrow, click on all borders, and you can see we've got borders. Now we're going to add a bit extra of the borders today. We're going to add a thick border around the table. Again, if you have a look at borders, you can just add borders to the left, to the right, to the top, but we're going to have a thick outside border. Okay. We're also going to add a thick outside border to these bottom section here. Again, click thick outside border and we're going to do one around the total now can you see this line is slightly thicker than the other lines okay and let me see if I can zoom in a bit just to make sure you can see okay next we're going to have uh, pay per mark we'll go through this later and we're going to put in there 250 now I want you to change this into currency so what we do to change it to currency is we go up to this options here and you can see we can format option there is currency okay you got percentages uh, you've got numbers you've got accounting we're going to go with currency and you'll see it changes like so okay uh, let's just highlight this in a slightly maybe slightly lighter color great okay excellent now what we're going to do is oh, totals in there uh, if you remember how to add up the total scores okay the function was equals sum open your bracket 
okay and we're going to put in the first cell reference which in this instance is b3 okay and then we add a colon and we're going to go up to f3 so we type in there f3 and hit enter now that gives us the total marks that bobby has got for her exams for these five subjects Okay, next we're going to, do you remember the autofill? So we drag down like so, and it will calculate all the totals for each of the names. Next is to be average. It's exactly the same apart from you change the word sum to average. Okay, average, open your bracket. The first cell reference is B3, and the last one is F3. Okay, be careful you don't include the total. Okay, we don't want to add the total in our average, we just want the average of the five exams. Okay, now we've got our average, and then we can copy it down like so. Okay, excellent. Uh, next, we're going to use our average here, average mark for English. We go to equals average again, open bracket, the first cell reference, which is B3, and we're going to go all the way to B12. Okay, maths. Again, equals average. Okay, but what you can do again is drag for the five subjects like so. Now, this is another one, the highest mark. So what we want to do is to find out what was the highest mark for each of these subjects. And the same thing again, we do exactly the same as we did as the sum and the average, but we change the function. So we go to equals max is what we use for the highest mark we go to max and we can even drag as opposed to typing as well b3 to b12 be careful you don't include b13 in that please okay hit enter and it tells us that the highest mark was 96 okay now the lowest mark again if we use equals max for the highest we could use min for the lowest equals min i'll do it the other way this time b3 colon to b12 and then if we hit enter it should give us the lowest mark for english now to make it easier you can highlight the two cells and you can drag them along like so to make it easier okay and then the total again do you remember the total equals sum we're going for b3 to b12 Okay, we're just calculating it for the 10 students. Hit enter, and we have our total. Again, we can autofill along like so. Okay, now the next one we're going to look at is the earnings. Now, let's say, for example, the school said, for every mark you get in your total, we will pay you £2.50. Okay, so if you got one mark out of five exams, you get £2.50. If you get 10 marks, you get £25. Now, the earnings for the first student, we take our equal sign, we're going to get our total, and we're going to times that by the mark. So it means that he got 401 marks for the five exams, and then for each mark, he gets £2.50. So we, we highlight the £2.50, which is B18. So G3 times B18, and this student, Bobby, he gets over a thousand pounds, one thousand and two pounds fifty pence. Now, how do you think that we would do it for the others down here? Now, a lot of you be thinking, okay, autofill, drag it down. Unfortunately, it doesn't work. Okay, the reason why I'll show you on the formulas, show formulas. Okay, let's just uh, shrink these down. Okay, so see if we can see everything in here okay good so what we're saying here is g3 times b18 for the first person it was correct so we can see g3 okay which is the total points times b18 b18 is the two pounds 50 now when we drag it down and also fill can you see the two pound 50 it now moves down to b19 and further down still to b20 b21 what we want is we want the B18 to stay there and not move. 
So what we have to do is use an absolute cell reference. That's what this is called. So let's just uh, bring this back to how it was. If you ever see the hashtags, it just means that the cell is not wide enough to fit the numbers. Okay, so let's go back to this formula. G3 times BAT. Now, what we do is we want to uh, use an absolute cell reference for B18. So what we do is we put a dollar sign before the B because we effectively want to freeze and lock that cell uh, for when we drag it down and autofill. Now, let me just try it again. So we put in our dollar sign before the B, dollar sign before the 18. And then when we drag our autofill, it works like so. And just to show you the formulas again, okay, we've got G3 times B18, G4 times B18. The dollar sign keeps the B18 in place like so. It's called an absolute cell reference. Okay, excellent. Now that's done, we're going to add two charts to this uh, spreadsheet just to finish it off. Uh, the first one we're going to do is to look at a comparison of English and maths for each of the students. So, for the first part, we click on the student name and we highlight the 10 students for English and maths. And to insert a chart, we go to the insert button at the top. Uh, there are some recommended charts, but today we're going to use the bar chart. So, click on the bar chart and you can see it gives us a preview. Now, whenever you create a chart, you must always, always, always have a title and axis labels. So, we can move this to the side. We're going to call this English. And, oh. English and exam results. Okay, so we have our title and we can see English is in blue and maths is in orange. Okay, visually you can see uh, what people are getting. It's a lot easier to see in a chart than when we're looking at numbers. Now for the axis labels, you click on the plus arrow here, click on axis titles. Okay, but for some of you using a different version of uh, Microsoft Excel, you might not have this plus. If you don't have it, you got to go to the format, design, and then you'll see axis and chart title on the side here on different versions of Excel. Now the axis titles we write down here, this was the, the score, and here are the names. Okay, let's close this. Okay, so we have one chart, English and math exam results with the names and the scores like so. Okay, we're going to do one more chart. Okay, we can do it for geography. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky. Uh, we only need this information and these names. So, what we need to do first is highlight the student names. Now, hold down the CTRL button on the bottom left side of the keyboard. On the very bottom left, you should see a button called CTRL. Hold that down for me. And while it's held down, you can actually select geography at the same time. Okay, now let go of the CTRL. And then we're going to go again to insert, chart, like so. And can you see, we have our names and the results for geography. Let's move this under here like so. Okay, and again, geography is not a good title for a chart. Exam results. Okay, and you notice there's no legend. We don't need a legend because there's only one set that we're comparing it to. Here, we need to know English is blue, math is an orange. Because we have a suitable title, we know these are all related to geography. Now, same again, we go to our axis titles, scores, names. Okay, once you've done that, make sure you do file, save as. Okay, I'm just going to save it to my desktop. Lesson 2. And please write your name uh, next to it as well so I know whose work it is that I'm, I'm marking. Okay, click on the save. And that file there 
that you have you're going to upload this file to your Google Classroom okay and then you're done with today's lesson okay thank you for tuning in I'll see you for lesson three